Well, good morning. My name is Ala McCoy. I am Director of Startup Support at the University of Maryland's UM Ventures. And I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you who joined us today for the next installment in Startup Fundamentals Workshop Series, both live webinar audience and those watching a recorded version um, on our Startup UMD YouTube channel. This workshop series is offered by UM Ventures at the University of Maryland in collaboration with Maryland Technology Enterprise Institute and Dingman Center for Entrepreneurship. To everyone attending the live session, please feel free to submit questions via the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. You can also post them in chat. Um, and if you see a question that somebody else submitted, you can upload it so it will be answered first. We are recording this session, so you have an opportunity to submit your questions anonymously if you wish to do so. So today we will talk about entrepreneurship resources and suggested path to follow them, uh, where to begin, how to proceed, um, and the reasons for that. In the past, entrepreneurship resources on most university campuses were mostly focused on STEM researchers um, however, today, innovative ideas and startups are coming from all disciplines um, and resources are tailored and available to innovators in either sciences or the humanities. Um, and all of the resources are for innovators in either sciences or the humanities who are passionate about their research and would like a low risk opportunity to transform it into a product or service to benefit the public. In other words, if you wish to see if your research that you're doing in your lab or in your office on campus can be transformed into um, an actual product or service that the public could use, um, this is the right place to, to be, to learn about how to do that. University of Maryland has a rich ecosystem of programs, offices, funding opportunities, um, and here are some that you may or may not have heard about. Uh, you may have heard about um, Young Ventures, you may have heard about Dingman Center for Entrepreneurship or MTech, but it's all really confusing and difficult to navigate. It's really confusing to figure out when do I go, where and how and where do I start? And also, while we are not located in the Silicon Valley, where VC funding is a plenty, the state of Maryland and University of Maryland startups have access to over $1 million in early stage funding. That's not even counting SBIRs or STTRs. However, again, it's difficult to figure out how to access this funding. We'll talk about some of these opportunities. So together with, to make it easier for everyone, together with partners across campus, we created Startup Guide, a tool that can help navigate in the ecosystem and resources in the order, suggested order that makes sense. Uh, this tool exists in online form at startupguide.umd.edu. Um, and we also have a, a basic flow chart that I could share with you if you would like to see that. Uh, so the suggested path is divided into four parts following the stages of company development, starting with feasibility assessment, um, that's even before you form the company, then startup formation, acceleration, and becoming a sustainable company. Uh, you can visit uh, the website, startupguide.umd.edu. And I, again, I can share the flowchart with everyone. Um, and both show a lot more details with concrete steps, and some people even call it a board game of sorts. However, here you can see a very high level path, basic high level path that works best for most startups. Of course, everybody's different and everybody's path will be different. Not everybody's going to take the same steps, but this is um, an order that we suggest um, at least to begin with. And we will discuss the very first steps in more details further in this presentation. Uh, I know that you can see that the first step here is intellectual property disclosure. And I know that there is some confusion 
and especially among those who are not necessarily very much familiar about it, what is intellectual property? So we will discuss uh, we will discuss for a few minutes the details about what is intellectual property. As you can see here is the first, and that's the first step. So according to the World Intellectual Property Organization, you can see the definition. IP refers to creations of the mind, such as inventions, literary and artistic works, designs and symbols, names and images used in commerce. The first uh, type of IP that everybody heard about and um, knows about is a patent. What is a patent? So the patent is actually a negative intellectual property right. It is the right to exclude others from making, using, offering for sale, or selling the invention. And there are three types of patents. First is a utility patent, and utility patents cover processes, machines, particle of manufacture, or composition of matter. Next one is, the next type is design patents. Um, it's a new, original, and ornamental design for an article of manufacture. And third is plant patents, any distinct and new variety of plant. So as you can see, patents cover may cover processes, they may cover design, um, and they may cover plants. Next type of IP is trademark and service mark. They are very similar. A trademark is a word, name, a symbol, or device that is used in trade with goods to indicate the source of the goods to distinguish them from the goods of others. So you all know the Apple trademark um, and many Google trademark and many others. And service mark is the same as tra trademark, except, except it identifies and distinguishes the source of a service rather than a product. And the terms trademark and mark are commonly used to refer to both trademarks and service marks. And the next very um, well-known type of IP is copyright. Um, it is different from patent and it's different from uh, trademark or mark. Copyright is a type of intellectual property that protects original work of authorship as soon as an author fixes the work in a tangible form of expression. Examples could be paintings, photographs, illustrations, music, com musical compositions, sound recordings, um, blog posts, and many others. The big difference between copyright, uh, trademarks, and service mark is that copyright, you don't need to apply for it. It applies immediately as soon as you write something down in your notebook, draw something, take a photo, snap a photo with your phone, copyright applies. To reserve your uh, patent rights or mark, uh, service marks or trademarks, you actually have to apply uh, for that protection. You don't need to apply for copyright. You can register copyright to uh, get more protection, but you don't necessarily have to do that. So now that you are familiar with uh, types of IP, um, you know what type of IP you would be submitting. So when you submit an intellectual disclosure, intellectual property disclosure to your ventures, you don't need to worry about the type of IP or identifying is this patent, is this copyright. Um, all you need to do is just uh, submit a description of your innovation, which could be patentable or it could be um, it could be protected by copyright um, and, and some some other ways. Um, at your ventures, we have trained professionals who will review your disclosure, develop a relevant IP protection plan. They will determine whether or not, with you, of course, they will work with you to determine whether or not um, patent protection is needed or should this be protected by copyright and, and so on and so forth. Um, they will also do any IP filings that are deemed necessary. So if um, if your innovation needs to be protected by patent, they will file, they will take care of that and they will do that. 
Um, they will also they will also work on option and a license in your intellectual property if needed. Uh, so you can visit go.umu.edu/disclose-ip to find out how you could submit um, any results of your any research um, as the first step to submit intellectual property to disclosure. Another great resource are Startup Fundamentals Workshop Series. Some of you are here because you've watched our workshops before. Uh, some of you are here for the first time. Uh, we have a whole series throughout the year. We do take a break in the summer, uh, simply because the audience usually drops off. Uh, but we have workshops on a variety of topics, um, anything from market research, sales, uh, pitching, raising capital, uh, how to form a company, uh, and many, many uh, intellectual property in more detail, for example, um, many, many other topics that are off that could be of interest to both beginner entrepreneurs at very early stages to um, all the way to advanced topics as well. Um, so you can visit go.umd.edu slash workshops 2022 to see a list of upcoming live workshops like the one that we are doing today. Most of our workshops are recorded and then posted on our YouTube channel. Um, so you can also visit uh, our Startup UMD YouTube channel um, and see we have now a quite a, an impressive library of past workshops. So you can browse, they are organized in, in playlists. Um, how, and however, not all workshops are recorded. Sometimes our presenters do not wish to be recorded for a variety of reasons. So we, at that point, do not record. So you should watch um, for a notation that says whether or not a workshop is going to be recorded. And if it's something of great interest, um, you should try to attend. If not, then you will be able to watch it later. Uh, we also have a very impressive lineup of entrepreneurs and residents. Uh, these are experienced entrepreneurs who are available to you to talk about anything related to your idea um, and all the way how to run a company. So if you, even if you are in the very early stages and you're not sure, uh, is this a good idea? What should I do with it? Um, and all the way, how do I form a company? <clears throat> how do I develop my business model? You can speak to these individuals. If you go to go.umd.edu slash BIR2022, you can see their profiles. You, you can look, um, you can click on the LinkedIn profiles to see what their expertise is um, to see if this is a right person for you to connect with. Um, and then you can also click to see what their upcoming appointments are. Uh, and appointments are updated all the time. So if you don't see anything right away, um, check back in a week to see if more, um, more appointments were posted. Um, and also feel free to reach out to me um, and let me know that you could find a suitable time. We can, we can connect you directly with the person and you can schedule time outside of their posted appointments. Uh, the next step, I would highly recommend that many of you look into possibly participating in regional or um, possibly national I-4. Um, I-4 is a fantastic program where big focus is on customer discovery. Uh, this program teaches uh, future entrepreneurs. This is all before you even form a company. This program teaches future entrepreneurs how to how to do research into who your customers are. How would they potentially interact with your product or service? What is the value proposition that you're offering today? Why would they use it? How would they interact with it? This is a great uh, three week virtual program. Um, and it also offers, regional program offers pathway to national i -Corps. And national i increases the chance for uh, SBIR and other many other grants. 
gives a lot of credibility to you going forward. Um, national program also comes with $50,000 in funding. Um, and again, this is a great way to conduct very important and highly granular market research um, and uh, learn a lot about your potential customers, who they are and who they are not. In many cases, in many times, um, when teams start this program, they think that their customers are, um, they, they often discover that their customers are not necessarily who they thought they were, and the value proposition that they thought they were is not necessarily exact. So they, people go, teams who go through this program learn a lot. Um, I4 is managed by MTech, um, and they offer monthly info sessions. So the first Wednesday of the month, if you're curious about it, if you would like to learn more, I recommend that you sign up to attend uh, the next info session. Um, you can also register. Uh, go ahead and register and watch um, the pre-work workshops uh, just to see, just to get a taste for what it is before you even participate fully in the program. So once you go through i and you have information about, uh, more information about your potential target market, about your value proposition, um, your customer segments, uh, this would be a great time to apply for um, TEDCO Maryland Innovation Initiative uh, Technology Validation Grant. So this is again, before you even form the company. Uh, so this grant, goes to a uh, PI's lab, um, it has to be, the PI has to be a full-time faculty at the University of Maryland um, or at other five universities, uh, other four universities that participate in this program. Um, it offers $115,000 and goes to the lab, the overhead. Um, and it's a nine month project to validate the technology um, and also to create commercial detailed commercialization plan. So this is a great opportunity to, for um, postdocs or PhD students to do a soft launch of the company without leaving the university. Um, you can still use University of Maryland labs. Um, you can still uh, work with students to do the project. Um, and the grant covers salaries, equipment, materials, and, and any outside cons consultants or experts that may be needed. Um, again, this is a great way to soft launch the company, uh, very low risk. You don't actually have to leave the university, quit the university, you stay um, in your current position. You can finance your PhD or postdoc salary through this through this grant as well um, and buy whatever necessary materials that you need. Um, to, for anybody who is interested in applying in, to this grant, um, you will need to work with uh, site miners, MII site miners. Um, uh, MII site miners are specifically dedicated to, um, to guide the application development. They won't write your application, but they will um, because they're very much familiar with reviewers, uh, they will guide your application development and will let you know where the reviewers might have a problem with what's in the application. They're also the people who will be defending your application in front of the reviewers, and they do this uh, for all applications. So they know the reviewers well, they know what they're looking for. Um, and uh, TEDCO requires that you work with an MII site miner for at least a month uh, prior to the submission of the application to make sure that the application is uh, is developed um, in the in the form that could be would be uh, reasonably defensible. Um, so if you're interested in exploring TEDCO MII grant, please let me know. Um, we'll take a look at your technology and then we'll identify an appropriate site miner for you to work with. Uh, just to give you an idea, here are TEDCO MII program metrics. Um, as you can see, the success rate uh, is, while not 100%, but pretty high. Um, it's, um, you know, 
The application itself is uh, five pages long, so not a very long application, but it's very different from many other from uh, other academic grants, as in most of the application is devoted to a potential business case. Uh, what is the market? Uh, what is a potential business model and such? And this is where the, um, the site miners come in um, to help because they are, um, they are all industry business people um, and they help develop that or they help guide that business side of the application. So are there any questions, by the way? I'm happy to stop and answer any questions about MII and anything else I've talked about so far. So if you have any, please submit them via Q&A. And then um, at the end, um, I'll also be able to unmute your mic and you can ask your question that way. Go forward. Um, so once you finish your nine month, once you finish your uh, nine month MII project, um, at the end of that, you will have a commercialization plan um, with a clear idea of what do you do? How do you commercialize this technology? How do you actually run the company? What's the business model? How much funding do you need? Um, and at that point, that's when you actually would form the company. Um, so once you've formed the company, uh, there are other options that are available. Uh, so once the company is formed, uh, there is a startup incubator on our campus in the Raven building managed by MTech. Uh, there's also potentially other space available. You don't have to go in the Raven incubator. Um, if you need more space, uh, there's, we can help secure some space in the Discovery District across the street, across uh, the Baltimore Washington Boulevard, uh, or there are other options in, in the area as well. But um, uh, Rabin Building is a great space to go to. At that point, your startup would also need to secure license to the intellectual property that they would need to use. Um, and University of Maryland offers very generous uh, startup friendly express startup IP license terms that are uh, not asking for any cash payments up front and uh, mostly mostly uh, focused on uh, making sure that the startup is using the money or any funding or any cash to build up the company and um, develop the technology. Uh, then, um, at that point, as soon as you form the company, um, if you are a University of Maryland employee, faculty, staff, um, you should submit a conflict of interest disclosure. Um, it's mandatory for all UMCP faculty and staff to do so. Um, it's it's not nothing negative. Um, it's just required by the state of Maryland um, and by the University of Maryland, um, it's a fairly well organized and well run process um, where the uh, conflict of Man conflict of interest committee would review your disclosure um, and either it would issue a letter saying you don't have any conflicts or they would say here are your conflicts and here is a management plan. Um, they are very accommodating um, and very supportive of startups. University is very supportive of startups uh, in general, uh, so they will work with you on you know, figuring out how, uh, if there are any conflicts, uh, what is a way to manage them. We will um, we will have an upcoming conflict of interest uh, workshop um, discussing this in detail. If you're interested, you can uh, log, you can join us, or you can review uh, last year's session. It's on our YouTube channel. Also at this point, um, the company can apply for the next TEDCO MII stage uh, of funding. It's $300,000 that would go as an investment into the company itself. So phase one or technology validation goes to your lab um, as research funding. 
this next phase um, is a way to get your company up and running. Um, it's a great way to finance uh, those first, you know, six, nine months uh, while you are setting up your lab, setting up your office, um, a, a way to for postdocs or PhD students to transition from from the university into the company in a way to um, to be able to get paid. In the meanwhile, we all have to we all have to pay rent. We all have to eat. So this is a way to um, start creating uh, those first early salaries using this money, um, and also um, this. Tedco Maya Company Information Funding is fairly quick to get, um, and it's a great gateway um, and, you know, ability for the company to get going while you're waiting for your SBIRs and SDTRs or maybe some other funding that much, takes much longer and a lot more difficult to get. Um, also, you could apply for Maryland Industrial Partnerships on MIPS funding. Uh, through University of Maryland, it offers up to 180k in um, in R and D funding, and a great way to partner with any university system of Maryland lab to do R and D for your company. Um, again, we have a separate workshop talking about MIP, how MIPS funding works, um, and I'm happy to um, uh, to make an introduction to people who run the the program. Um, and then, of course, SBIR funding is a great way to finance technology-based startups um, for additional R&D. So, uh, lots of things that we discussed prior to, to this slide are focused on before the company is formed, and these are all of the steps and resources at startup formation. Um, so, next steps for most of you would be to um, first review startup guide at umd.edu. Um, it has detailed, more detailed. So each um, each step is um, is listed as a um, as a little tile, and you you can uh, it has a little bit of information, but every step has a link to additional resource and uh, to the actual website that runs the program. So you should first start by reviewing the startup guide, familiarizing yourself, um, and then apply for the next regional i cohort. Um, they are just now finishing a cohort, uh, but there should be one in the summer. Apologies. Um, sign up to talk to an entrepreneur in residence. Um, it's a free service to you. So um, if you need some uh, somebody to uh, provide additional feedback or provide some ideas or um, just uh, talk about what do I do next? Uh, is this even a good idea? Um, entrepreneurs and residents are great for that. Register for additional workshops. Um, and if you haven't done yet, submit your intellectual property disclosure. Um, you don't have to create any um, any new descriptions. You can just fill out the form that talks about uh, who you are and uh, which grants did you use to create intellectual property, and then just attach your paper, attach your uh, PowerPoint presentation, whatever it is that you already have created. And then apply for the TEDCO MII Technology Validation Funding. That's really um, so between the i um, and the TEDCO MII Tech Validation Funding, that's really um, most important steps. Um, so we have a question, is there a fee for the intellectual property disclosure and filing? And the answer is no. Um, so any, any um, there's no fee for you to, to uh, file and um, University of Maryland will pay for any IP filing. So if they determine that your innovation is patentable um, and needs to be protected by a patent, then the University of Maryland will uh, pay those fees. I hope that answered your question. Uh, 
uh, and just to inspire you, uh, feel free to submit additional questions. I'm happy to answer them. And at this point, if you would like, you can also raise your virtual hand and um, I can unmute your mic if that's easier. So just to inspire you to, here are some of the examples of success stories of faculty or um, IP-based startups coming out of University of Maryland. Um, this is one of the first um, quantum computing company that went public. Um, it was started by Dr. Chris Monroe in the Department of Physics. Uh, this is a collaboration between uh, social sciences researcher, Dr. Jin Jin. She's a professor of economics and computer science professor, Ben Peterson. Um, they created a uh, company called Hazel Analytics um, that collects data, uh, publicly available data uh, from um, health departments and normalizes them whereby you can compare um, different health department data um, across the board, um, sort of like apple to apple. And it was acquired in 2023. They have a lot of customers. And if you go on Yelp, um, you can see health score for each, for many of, not, I don't think all restaurants have it, but many restaurants will have health score. Um, and that's provided by Hazel Analytics. Um, here's another great example. This is a company uh, started by Dr. Ken Kao um, of the Department of Cell Biology and Molecular Genetics. Um, so Dr. Ken Kao is doing research on how to cure progeria, which is a premature aging disease, a very serious disease. Um, and during her research, she found a, a meth that methylene blue has very strong anti-aging effect on skin. Um, antioxidant skin uh, effect. And so she launched a skincare company, anti aging skincare company, Lean. And um, you, can, you can go shopping, uh, you can buy her products on her site um, and uh, also on Macy's.com or on Amazon.com. Um, we also have a few professors who have started multiple startups. So Dr. Srini Raghavan. Um, he's a professor of chemical and biomolecular engineering, and these are just some of the startups that he started. There are, I believe there are two more not listed here. Uh, and the way he does it, he invents, invents something together with a PhD student, and then that PhD student goes on to run the company. And he's been quite successful doing that, and uh, Dr. Raghavan goes back to inventing his next best, next great thing. Um, Grip Boost, both Grip Boost and Midcura are um, already revenue generating companies. You can buy their products. Uh, Dr. Lian Bin Hu um, is another serial entrepreneur, serial startup founder at the University of Maryland. Um, there are a few more startups that need to be added to this list, uh, but that's also his model is. Uh, he works with a postdoc or PhD student um, to create the invention, and then that postdoc or PhD student um, develops it uh, using the MII funding, and then they launch and run the company, while Dr. Hu goes back to uh, inventing his next great invention. So here are some success best um, best strategies on how to do a uh, startup based on the University of Maryland IP. So first is um, if you're a faculty member, do not form your startup too early. As soon as you form um, a startup, that startup cannot use University of Maryland equipment. You need to go and get your own lab, buy your own equipment. Um, so don't do it until you actually are ready and have funding for that. Uh, I'll have a reason for that. If you have customers knocking on your door saying, I'd like to buy your stuff, that's a good way to do it. If you have an SBIR funding coming your way, um, that's another reason to do it. But other than that, don't form the company too early. Uh, professors 
uh, faculty members at the University of Maryland uh, can be founders or co-founders of the company, uh, but it's highly discouraged uh, that they become CEOs of companies. One, uh, because it takes a lot of time to actually run the company um, and very different skill set from, uh, you know, you may be a brilliant scientist, uh, well-respected scientist, inventor, but running a company is just a very different skill set. Um, and uh, it's best to let somebody else do that. Um, as you can see, some of the most successful examples are where the faculty lets the postdocs and PhDs run companies or outside CEOs. Um, so if you have postdocs or if you are postdoc or PhD student interested in transforming that invention from your lab into a real solution um, avail made, made available to people, uh, this, this is a way to do it. And seek out early market validation, that's really important. Um, through i um, and then tech, MII tech validation grant. Uh, that's really important just to make sure that what you are building is a solution that um, is needed. And the way you're building it is in a way that would be useful to, to your potential customers. Um, so we discussed all of these. Again, here's the, um, here is the um, high level steps you submit your IP disclosure, um, participate in I4, possibly national I4, apply for your tech validation grant while you're still, um, this is before you form the company, then you form the company, apply for MII funding to get the company up and running, uh, submit your COI disclosure, uh, get space for the company and secure license for intellectual property, um, and then apply for funding such as MIPS or SBIR grants, um, and also University of Maryland has investment funds. Um, and I will cover more specific funding opportunities um, in the next workshop. We'll be focused on specifically um, investment funds. Um, well, here are some of the other examples. But um, I think I'll go ahead, go ahead and stop here, um, maybe even on this slide, uh, just because it describes many of the steps I discussed. Does anybody have any additional questions? Uh, you can either, you can raise your hand uh, and I can allow you to talk or you can submit them via the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you would like to get a copy of the presentation, um, just shoot me an email or um, and I'll send the slides to everyone. Um, and I will also post this recording on a uh, YouTube channel so you can watch it again if you would like to. Thank you so much to everyone who logged in um, and hope to uh, hope to connect with you soon.